Hi guys, welcome to this video on complex numbers and radical reduction. Um, really, we're just going to focus on uh, i, so we're just going to focus on the imaginary number i here, and complex numbers from quadratic equations, um, and we'll go into radical reduction in the next video, um, which will be uploaded same time, but uh, different video, different topic. So, uh, we are going to learn to find and simplify i from roots of a quadratic equation, because sometimes quadratic group Quadratic equations do not have real answers, and you'll know you're successful when you can take the quad root of any quadratic equation, real or not. So, um, we talked about the i table, okay? So, when we are reducing powers of i is when we are going to use this table. So, this table uh, is for reducing powers of i. So, this table is for reducing higher powers of i. So, um, as you can see, i to the first has a value of just i. If you do i squared, uh, i squared has a value of negative 1. If you do i to the third power, that's the equivalent of negative i. And if you do i to the fourth power, that's the equivalent value of 1. So, other values that have a value of i would be i to the fifth and i to the ninth. Um, other values that have a value of negative 1 would be i to the 6th, i to the 10th. Um, other powers that have a value of negative i would be i to the 7th, i to the 11th. And other powers that have a value of 1 would be i to the 8th, i to the 12th, and so on and so forth. So what this means, this last column, decimal, is for the next slide, when we talk about reducing higher powers of i, what you can do is um, according to the next slide you're going to look up the decimal you get after doing some division and when you do um, it will tell you what power of i it shares a value with so you can do it for any number so let's take a look so reducing higher powers of i you're going to take the power and you're going to divide by four then you're going to look up the decimal on the chart and that is the reduced corresponding value of i. So let's take a look at an example. i to the 22nd power. So what I'm going to do is divide 22 by 4. And when I do that, I get 5.5. All I care about is this, the, the 0.5 that's a part of it. So 0.5, I'm going to go back to my chart really quick. I'm going to look up 0.5. 0.5 is in this column which is equal to i to the second power. So it can be said that i to the 22nd power is equivalent to the value of i squared, which would be negative 1. So that is what I mean when I say reduce higher powers of i. So let's try it again. Let's try it with i to the 33rd. So take 33 and divide it by 4, and you get... 8.25 when you divide 33 by 4 the 0.25 is all that matters the 0.25 is going to be according to my table here it's going to be the first row of i to the first so i to the 33rd would be the same as saying i to the first which has a value of i and then finally uh, last example is i to the 56th power, so you'll divide 56 by 4. Uh, and when you do that, you get a nice even 14, which has no decimal point. So, no decimal here. Um, since that's the case, since we get a nice even number like this, that means I'm looking for this row here, where the decimal is a whole number. And so that's the equivalent of i to the 4th. So i to the 56th is the equivalent of of i to the fourth power, which has a value of positive 1. So that's what I am talking about uh, when I am reducing higher powers of i, and that's how it works. Okay, so we also talked about complex conjugates, okay? There are solutions that result from solving the quadratic formula. When you have non-real solutions, 
you get a pair of complex answers. Not only do you get that A plus B times I answer, but you also get that A minus B times I answer. So it means, since we always get two answers for a quadratic equation, when you are doing your quadratic equation and getting a non-real answer, you should always get two non-real answers um, as well. So you get two reals or two non-reals. And immediately, if you get one of the non-real answers, you can switch the sign and you have the other. That's the conjugate of the complex number. So let's take a look at this example. Okay, Solve for all roots of x squared minus 2x plus 5. Um, so I'm going to try to quick just factor it. Um, I'm going to think really quick. Factors of 5, 5 and 1. Um, unfortunately, 5 minus 1, uh, 5 plus 1. Since this is positive, it's either positive 5, positive 1, negative 5, negative 1. Those either add up to 6 or negative 6, which is not the middle term. So you know what? I'm going to have to do the quadratic formula. Um, so quadratic formula, uh, x squared minus 2x plus 5. Um, I'm going to start plugging stuff in. So the roots here, x equals negative b, so 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative 2 squared is 4. Take away 4 times a times c. So a is 1, c is 5, times 4 is 20. So 4 minus 20 all over 2a, which is, since a is 1, we get two okay so let's start simplifying um, when I start to simplify I get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 and you know what you guys have been told six million times that you can't do that you can't take the square root of a negative 16 uh, but you can so what we're gonna do is you can replace the square root of 16 Right here, we're gonna swap it. We're gonna swap it in as being square root of 16 times the square root of negative one. So um, that is going to enable us to finish solving the rest of the problem. So what I am going to do then is recognize that this is i. So I can rewrite my expression here, my equation as two plus or minus the square root of 16 times i, and that is still divided by 2. OK, so what's nice about the quadratic formula is that it's already set up to give me my two uh, conjugate answers, the positive and the negative version. So now I just need to take the square root of 16. So uh, x is equal to. 2 plus or minus square root of 16 is 4 times i all divided by 2. So now what I'm going to do is I see that the 2, the 4i, and the 2 are all divisible by 2, so I'm going to reduce my fraction. So what I get is x is equal to uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4i divided by 2 is 2i, so plus or minus 2i. So I'll, I now have reduced my fraction as much as possible. So now I'm just going to split my equation into its two conjugates. So I'm going to say x is equal to 1 plus 2i or x is equal to 1 minus 2i. And those are my two answers. Both are the non-real solutions to that equation. They are the roots of x squared minus 2x plus 5. Let's take a look at another one. So solve for all possible roots. Um, so if I try to factor this, um, I know that they both, both of my factors either have to be double negative or double positive because of the positive on the end. Uh, if I add 3 and 1, I get 4, and if I subtract 1 and 3, I get negative 4. So it's not going to work for the middle term. So that means I'm going to have to turn to the quadratic formula. So uh, I'm going to set up my quadratic formula as we did in the last problem. So x is equal to um, negative 
negative negative two. So excuse me, that is a positive two plus or minus the square root of negative two squared again is four. Take away one times three is 12. One times four times three is 12, excuse me. So four minus 12 divided by two because a is one, so two times that one is two. So let's go ahead and start simplifying. So I get x is equal to two plus or minus the square root of negative eight divided by two. So now I'm gonna try to simplify that uh, by breaking the eight apart into i. Uh, and square root of 8. So x is equal to 2 plus or minus uh, the square root of 8 times the square root of negative 1, which I know that this is the same as saying i, all divided by 2. So now I can just rewrite it as x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of uh, 8 times i over 2. Now, I run into an issue here because I need to reduce the square root of 8 as much as possible. This is not as simple as I can make this answer. So I'm going to try to factor 8 into groups of prime numbers. The, be the best two prime numbers that I can do are three and two, since both three and two are prime and they are um, the most common factors that go into almost every other non-prime number. So I can, over here separately, write eight as factors of uh, four times two. So I have a prime number I'm going to have to rewrite that because I screwed up 4 times 2. So here's a prime number. And then, you know what? 4 is not prime. So I'm going to break it down into prime numbers too. 2 times 2. So now what I'm going to do is every time I have two numbers that are identical, two prime numbers that ident are identical, I'm going to factor them out. So I have three of them, but I can only pick two out of the three. So I'm just going to pick these two here. So these two are what's going to get grouped and yanked out. So what ends up happening is uh, a 2 gets yanked out. And what's left is this 2 here underneath the radical symbol. So I get 2 times the square root of 2. And so I can rewrite this as x equals 2 plus or minus, and I'm going to rewrite square root of 8 as 2 times the square root of 2i over 2. Now that I have every one of my pieces of this fraction has a 2 in it, I can divide everything by 2. So I'm going to do that. So I get x is equal to 2 divided by 2 is 1 plus or minus uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1 times the square root of 2i. And then I'm going to split it into the two conjugates of x equals 1 plus, and now I don't need to rewrite the 1 times square root of 2i. I just have to rewrite the square root of 2i. Or x is going to be equal to 1 minus the square root of 2i. That's a minus sign. And there it is. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you more on how to do this factoring of radicals like this. Um, but that's it, guys. That's how to uh, find the complex answers and imaginary answers for any quadratic equation. Thanks for watching. See you in the Reducing Radicals video.